Chapter 8 The men of Ephraim said to him, Why have you served us thus that you didn't call us when you went to fight with Midian? They did chide with him sharply. He said to them, What have I now done in comparison with you? Isn't the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abiezer? God has delivered into your hand the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb, and what was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their anger was abated toward him when he had said that. Gideon came to the Jordan and passed over, he and the three hundred men who were with him faint yet pursuing. He said to the men of Succoth, Please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me, for they are faint, and I am pursuing after Zeba and Zalmunna, the kings of Midian. The princes of Succoth said, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in your hand that we should give bread to your army? Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord has delivered Zeba and Zalmunna into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. He went up there to Penuel and spoke to them in the like manner, and the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Sukkoth had answered. He spoke also to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come again in peace, I will break down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were in Karkor, and their hosts were with them about fifteen thousand men, all who were left of all the host of the children of the east, for there fell one hundred twenty thousand men who drew the sword. Gideon went up by the way of those who lived in tents on the east of Nobah and Jogbaha, and struck the host, for the host was secure. Zeba and Zalmunna fled, and he pursued after them, and he took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmunna, and confused all the host. Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from the battle from the ascent of Herez. He called a young man of the men of Succoth and inquired of him, and he described for him the princes of Succoth and the elders of it, seventy-seven men. He came to the men of Succoth and said, See, Zeba and Zalmunna, concerning whom you did taunt me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmunna now in your hand that we should give bread to your men who are weary? He took the elders of the city and the thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. He broke down the tower of Penuel, and killed the men of the city. Then he said to Zeba and Zalmunna, What manner of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? They answered, As you are, so were they. Each one resembled the children of a king. He said, They were my brothers, the sons of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you had saved them alive, I would not kill you. He said to Jether his firstborn, Rise up and kill them. But the youth didn't draw his sword, for he was afraid, because he was a youth. Then Zeba and Zalmunna said, You rise up and fall on us, for as the man is, so is his strength. Gideon arose, then killed Zeba and Zalmunna, and took the crescents that were on their camels' necks. Then the men of Israel said to Gideon, You rule over us both you and your son and your son's sons also, for you have saved us out of the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, neither shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Gideon said to them, I would make a request of you, that you would give me every man the earrings of his spoil. For they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. They answered, We will willingly give them. They spread a garment, and did cast in it every man the earrings of his spoil. The weight of the golden earrings that he requested was one thousand and seven hundred shekels of gold, besides the crescents and the pendants, and the purple clothing that was on the kings of Midian, and besides the chains that were around their camels' necks. Gideon made an ephod of it, and put it in his city, even in Ophrah, and all Israel played the prostitute after it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and to his house. So Midian was subdued before the children of Israel, and they lifted up their heads no more. The land had rest forty years in the days of Gideon. Jeroboam the son of Joash went and lived in his own house. Gideon had seventy sons conceived from his body, for he had many wives. His concubine, who was in Shechem, she also bore him a son, and he named him Abimelech. Gideon the son of Joash died in a good old age, and was buried in the tomb of Joash's father, in Ophrah of the Abezrites. 
It happened as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel turned again and played the prostitute after the Baals and made Baal Bereth their god. The children of Israel didn't remember the Lord their God, who had delivered them out of the hand of all their enemies on every side. Neither showed they in kindness to the house of Jeroboam, who is Gideon, according to all the goodness which he had shown to Israel. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hands to oppress some of the assembly. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. When he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This was during the days of unleavened bread. When he had arrested him, he put him in prison, and delivered him to four squads of four soldiers each to guard him, intending to bring him out to the people after the Passover. Peter therefore was kept in the prison, but constant prayer was made by the assembly to God for him. The same night when Herod was about to bring him out, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. Guards in front of the door kept the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up, saying, Stand up quickly. His chains fell off from his hands. The angel said to him, Get dressed and put on your sandals. He did so. He said to him, Put on your cloak and follow me. And he went out and followed him. He didn't know that what was being done by the angel was real, but thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate that leads into the city, which opened to them by itself. They went out and went down one street, and immediately the angel departed from him. When Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I truly know that the Lord has sent out his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod, and from everything the Jewish people were expecting. Thinking about that, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together and were praying. When Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a maid named Rhoda came to answer. When she recognized Peter's voice, she didn't open the gate for joy, but ran in and reported that Peter was standing in front of the gate. They said to her, You are crazy, but she insisted that it was so. They said, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. When they had opened, they saw him and were amazed. But he, beckoning to them with his hand to be silent, declared to them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. He said, Tell these things to James and to the brothers. Then he departed and went to another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers about what had become of Peter. When Herod had sought for him and didn't find him, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. He went down from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there. Now Herod was very angry with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They came with one accord to him, and having made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, they asked for peace, because their country depended on the king's country for food. On an appointed day, Herod dressed himself in royal clothing, sat on the throne, and gave a speech to them. The people shouted, The voice of a god, and not of a man. Immediately an angel of the Lord struck him, because he didn't give God the glory, and he was eaten by worms and died. But the word of God grew and multiplied. Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their service, also taking with them John, whose surname was Mark. Chapter 21 the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord, when King Zedekiah sent to him Pasher the son of Melchijah, and Zephaniah the son of Messiah, the priest, saying, Please inquire of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, makes war against us. Perhaps the Lord will deal with us according to all his wondrous works, that he may go up from us. Then Jeremiah said to them, Thus shall you tell Zedekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Behold, I will turn back the weapons of war that are in your hands, with which you fight against the king of Babylon and against the Chaldeans who besiege you, without the walls, and I will gather them into the midst of this city. I myself will fight against you with an outstretched hand, 
and with a strong arm, even in anger and in wrath and in great indignation. I will strike the inhabitants of this city, both man and animal. They shall die of a great pestilence. Afterward, says the Lord, I will deliver Zedekiah king of Judah and his servants and the people, even such as are left in this city from the pestilence, from the sword and from the famine, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and into the hand of their enemies, and into the hand of those who seek their life, and he shall strike them with the edge of the sword. He shall not spare them, neither have pity, nor have mercy. To this people you shall say, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I set before you the way of life and the way of death. He who remains in this city shall die by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. But he who goes out and passes over to the Chaldeans who besiege you, he shall live and his life shall be given to him for a prey. For I have set my face on this city for evil and not for good, says the Lord. It shall be given into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. Touching the house of the king of Judah, hear the word of the Lord. House of David, thus says the Lord, Execute justice in the morning, and deliver him who is robbed out of the hand of the oppressor, lest my wrath go forth like fire, and burn so that none can quench it, because of the evil of your doings. Behold, I am against you, O inhabitant of the valley, and of the rock of the plain, says the Lord. You all that say, Who shall come down against us, and who shall enter into our habitations? I will punish you according to the fruit of your doings, says the Lord, and I will kindle a fire in her forest, and it shall devour all that is round about her. Then the Pharisees and some of the scribes gathered together to him, having come from Jerusalem. Now when they saw some of his disciples eating bread with defiled, that is, unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews don't eat unless they wash their hands and forearms, holding to the tradition of the elders. They don't eat when they come from the marketplace unless they bathe themselves. And there are many other things which they have received to hold to, washings of cups, pitchers, bronze vessels, and couches. The Pharisees and the scribes ask him, Why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat their bread with unwashed hands? He answered them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For you set aside the commandment of God, and hold tightly to the tradition of men, the washing of pitchers and cups, and you do many other such things. He said to them, Full well do you reject the commandment of God that you may keep your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother. And he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever profit you might have received from me is korban, that is to say, given to God, then you no longer allow him to do anything for his father or mother, making void the word of God by your tradition, which you have handed down. You do many things like this. He called all the multitude to himself and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing from outside of the man that going into him can defile him. But the things which proceed out of the man are those that defile the man. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. When he had entered into a house away from the multitude, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Are you thus without understanding also? Don't you perceive that whatever goes into the man from outside can't defile him, because it doesn't go into his heart, but into his stomach, then into the latrine, thus making all foods clean? He said, That which proceeds out of the man, that defiles the man. For from within, out of the hearts of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, sexual sins, murders, thefts, covetings, wickedness, deceitful, lustful desires, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man.
From there he arose and went away into the borders of Tyre and Sidon. He entered into a house and didn't want anyone to know it, but he couldn't escape notice. For a woman, whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, having heard of him, came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by race. She begged him that he would cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, Let the children be filled first, for it is not appropriate to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. He said to her, For this saying, Go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. She went away to her house and found the child lying on the bed with the demon gone out. Again he departed from the borders of Tyre and Sidon and came to the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the region of Decapolis. They brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. They begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside from the multitude privately and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loosed. And he spoke clearly. He commanded them that they should tell no one, but the more he commanded them, so much the more widely they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He makes even the deaf hear and the mute speak.